Good morning. It's nice to see you here today. Just a couple of quick announcements. This past week we had Lutheran Schools Week and there was a lot of excitement and activity. Um, if you are on Facebook, go and look at the Facebook page. I'm sure there's more than a number of pictures on there. So please do take a look at that. Uh, also, uh, remember we have Bible study tonight. Uh, that information was sent out yesterday. We'd love to have you join us for that. Uh, it's on Zoom. Uh, I know it's not ideal, but well, a lot of things aren't ideal, so we just deal with it, right? So please remember that. Um, the other two things I have very simply first is when you come up for communion, do try to maintain that one pew distance between you and the other family group. I mean, obviously, you guys don't have to spend six you know, pews apart or something, right? Uh, but, you know, maintain that uh, just for the sake of safety, please. And finally, we do have some snow. I don't know if you noticed coming in this morning. Um, and what I'm going to ask is that some of you younger people keep an eye out if some of our older people need some help, offer them your arm, or if they, you see toddlers around, see if they need help too. Um, that's just a safety precaution and kind of being nice. So please remember that. The other thing, I did think of one more, is it's a little warmer in here today, isn't it? Okay. Um, it's because we got somebody down there, I think, basically throwing logs into the boiler or something, okay? Um, we literally do have somebody down there trying to make sure this is running to keep us uh, warm. So we thank the trustees, we thank Ryan and others who have spent so much time working on this. So right now, give the wave of fellowship to one another.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called or ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know we live in the midst of so many dangers that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 18. 
the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. Just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see the great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words, that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the names of, the, of other gods, that same prophet shall die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the epistles from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, St. Paul writes, Concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge, and this knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does yet not know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence, and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. However, do not all, not all possess this knowledge, but some, through former association with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not commend us to God, we are no worse off if we do not eat, no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who has knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged if his conscience is weak to eat food offered to idols? And so, by your knowledge, this weak person is destroyed, the brother for whom Christ died. Thus, sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. We read together. They went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new meeting with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere, 
throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. In the name of Jesus, amen. In our epistle reading, Paul writes, an idol has no real existence. Simply put, they aren't real. There is only one God, the Father. There's only one Lord, the Son, Jesus Christ, and we could also mention the Holy Spirit. And therefore, all other gods are a figment of imagination. Zeus isn't real. Baal isn't real. Allah of Islam is not real. For an idol has no real existence. But did you know that St. Paul circles back to the topic two chapters later? And there he gives a slightly different answer. There he says that false gods 
are real because they are actually demons. And therefore, the worshiping of idols is actually the worshiping of demons. Yes, demons. You see, behind every false religion, there is a power, just not a divine power. But there is a force that is leading people astray into false ideas. And with that in mind, let's shift a bit and let's talk about Moses. You know, Moses was sent by God to deliver the people from Egypt. But Exodus specifically says that God did this by executing judgments upon the gods of Egypt. With Yahweh behind him, Moses was sent to contend against the Egyptian gods. We first see this when Moses does dueling miracles against Pharaoh's sorcerers, who also perform miracles by demonic powers. But we witness this even more through the ten plagues. Did you know that you can match up the ten plagues with ten specific Egyptian gods? And at each time, the Lord is showing His superiority. Let me give you two examples. The ninth plague, there was darkness for three days. And this is against Ra, the Egyptian god of the sun. The Lord shows His superiority over Ra. And then finally, the tenth plague, where the firstborn is killed. Because the Egyptians worshipped Pharaoh and Pharaoh's son as if they were gods, the tenth plague killed Pharaoh's son. Yes, indeed, when the Lord killed Pharaoh's son, the Lord was killing an Egyptian god. So the Lord says in Exodus 12, 12, I will pass through Egypt on Passover night, and I will strike down the firstborn of the land of Egypt, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments, for I am Yahweh. And Moses was this instrument in doing this, to execute judgments on the gods of Egypt. And so in our Old Testament text, which is towards the end of Moses' life, God promises that one day there will be another like Moses, which is none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. So let me briefly mention three ways in which Moses is like Jesus. First, Moses knew God intimately. Moses spoke to God as two friends speak, and therefore he could reveal God to us. Well, who could possibly know God that well? <laughs> Jesus. And he knows him far better. Second, Moses was a mediator. This is what the text emphasizes, that Moses would pray for the people and beg for mercy. At one point, Moses stopped a plague with his prayers. He stood in the way of a plague, and it stopped. Well, who could mediate for us like that, stand in the way of God's wrath? Jesus, and far better, for he did this for all mankind on the cross. But finally, our focus for today, Moses was the one through whom God showed superiority over all other gods, the one through whom God executed judgments over the demons. Well, who else carries such authority as to strike back at the demons and to drive them away? None other than Jesus Christ. And with that introduction, I hope you see how all the readings tie together, and they tie to the gospel where Jesus drives out a demon. In our text, the demon, this false god, <laughs> panics. Uh, <laughs> have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. He's scared because he knows. He knows that Jesus is the one sent to be like Moses, and the one greater than Moses, Yahweh in the flesh. He knows that Jesus has the authority to strike back at all the evil powers of this world, and so the demon is scared. But Jesus silences him with a word, which is such good news for us because it means that our Jesus is stronger than all the evil powers. 
Just stop for a moment and think about all the evil powers of this world. All those powers which motivate men to do unspeakable things. Like political ideologies and political parties. Like false religions and different philosophies and worldviews and wrong ideas. And evil desires. Such as greed, envy, selfish ambition, slander, hatred, bullying, anger, lust, adultery, the neglect of true worship and the worship of false gods, along with all selfishness and self-centeredness. Are these not powerful things in our world? Do these not dominate the conversation? I'm talking about the power of sin and the power of the demons. An invisible evil, but one you know well, for you experience it every day. These are the false gods, the evil powers. And friends, our Jesus is stronger. The demon says, ah, have you come to destroy us? And Jesus says, be silent, come out of him. End of conversation. This is not like arguing on a Facebook thread where you know the other guy's going to come back with something else and beat you down. No. Jesus tells the demon, that's it. Be quiet. And the enemy speaks not another word. <laughs> Thanks be to God. So what does this mean for us? What does this mean for us living in the world? Well, first and foremost, it means that we need not be afraid. What can any of these powers do to us? If Jesus is for us, who can stand up against us? Pharaoh and his empire couldn't stand up to little old Moses. And likewise, no one can stand up against Christ and his church, for Jesus will bring victory. We need not be afraid. Second, we're seeing a picture of the end of the story. In the end, what will happen? The enemy will be silenced, never to be heard from again. Sadly, we don't get that silence yet. But we know on Judgment Day, every mouth will be stopped and all the evil world will be held accountable to God. And what a day it will be. But third, even now, we experience the authority of the Christ within our own selves. For the Lord lives and reigns within your heart through the gospel. Jesus says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, so go and make disciples, baptizing them and teaching them. And do you know what happens when you were baptized? Do you know what happens when you are taught? His authority enters you, silencing the foe within. In baptism, Christ commands the devil, come out of him, and the evil must obey. And in that moment, the authority of Christ came. This means that sin's power has been undone in your life, and you are no longer slaves. Yes, you sin. Yes, you stumble. Yes, you are tempted and you slip. True enough. But you are no longer slaves. For through the gospel, Christ has set you free to be the people of God with the joy of knowing his love and his full forgiveness. So the devil may roar like a lion. He may roar, scowl fierce as he will, but the truth is he's more like a chihuahua. For when he encounters the real lion, the real God, the lion of Judah, the devil must whimper away like a pathetic little dog. Hallelujah. Even so, life doesn't feel very victorious, does it? As Christians, we quickly learn that having Christ does not mean that we are rid of all of our problems. 
Because although the devil cannot touch our salvation, he certainly can make life miserable. So let me read you a section from the book of Revelation, which I think speaks to this whole sermon. It's from Revelation chapter 12. A war arose in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, the devil. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who's called the devil or Satan the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, the one who who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony, for they loved their lives even unto death. They loved not their lives even unto death. Therefore, rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows his time is short. Did you hear it? Woe to us on earth. Because the devil will spend his remaining time harassing the church. And how will the devil do it? With all the powers I mentioned before. With sinful desires. With political forces. With false religions. Strange ideologies. And all sorts of other evil. So, we need not fear him. He's judged. The deed's been done. But we also need to be aware that he will bite and scratch. We must be aware that our victory won't fully be experienced until the day of the resurrection. And in the meantime, there may be tough times on the horizon, sooner than we would like to think. For just as Jesus was only victorious after his death, only after his cross, and after his suffering, our victory will be like that. You see, the road to victory is through the cross. The road goes through suffering. The road goes through abuse and harassment from the world and its ways. But in Christ, there will be victory. So here's the takeaway. There are many evil powers in this world, false gods, the demons, who have no real existence in eternity, but they do make life miserable for now. They are hoping that they can make you question the love of God. But friend, the day is soon approaching when Jesus will say to all the demons, be silent and get out of my creation, and they will have to obey. And they, and they will be done for, and we will be done with them once and for all. And then we will live in a world without politics and without false religions and without lies, a world without sin and without suffering and without death. And in that world, no one will hate, no one will betray, no one will slander, for the whole world will be filled with the love of God the love that Christ showed his Father by trusting him even unto death, the same love that Christ showed you by giving his life as a ransom for many. I know life can be hard, and it might get harder still. But you have one like Moses, a deliverer. You have one greater than Moses, and he will save. So don't be like the Israelites. (laughs) They doubted. They grumbled. (laughs) They put God to the test. Rather, remember what Moses told them at the Red Sea. Do you remember? When all looked hopeless and the people were afraid, Moses said, Fear not, for Yahweh will fight for you. You only have to be silent. (laughs) Be still and know that he is God. 
Amen. We stand. And we confess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, light out of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, that one greater than Moses has come. We thank you that you have given to us your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. We pray that he might ever grant us his Spirit, that in the midst of a world that challenges us, in the midst of a sinful flesh that, that fights against us, that we might, by your grace, remain faithful unto death and inherit the crown of life. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, Heavenly Father, for the members of St. John, that all together we might indeed rejoice in this gift of Christ for us, one who defeats this sin and the devil in our lives. We pray especially today for Sally Lawson, John Lemke, the Lend family, the Lewandowski family, and the Lewis family. Grant that they might ever rejoice in your gifts and give thanks always for your blessings. Be with the persecuted church throughout the world that they may withstand the pressures that Satan is applying to them, and that by your blessing they might be faithful unto death. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the mission and the ministry of this congregation, that by your grace we might remember that we are to preach Christ and him alone, and that we are to preach Christ for us, for the forgiveness of sins, for victory over sin and death and the power of the devil and that we might raise this message amongst ourselves to encourage one another, and that we might remember to preach it to the world. We thank you for our Lutheran school. We thank you for our high schools and our colleges, and we pray that always they would remember the mission which they have been given, to teach Christ and him alone. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are sick and ill, we pray for Diane Griffin, Robert Dowst, who are hospitalized. We pray for Trudy Haft, who is, is sick. We pray as well for all those we know and we name in our hearts. Grant to them health and healing. Grant to them the strength that is necessary, not only to recover in this life, but the strength that is necessary never to lose their faith. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would be with all those who are first responders, for our police officers, firefighters, and the EMTs. We pray as well for the doctors and the nurses and the therapists and all those who help those who are sick and ill. Grant them all to be truly hands of your healing and your protection. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Heavenly Father, for peace in our nation. Grant that there may be understanding, 
that there may be discussion, that we may understand why others differ from us and we from them, and that we may work together to bring justice and peace and righteousness in, in this land. We pray for our president and our vice president. We pray for our governor and all those others who are in position to make and enact laws. Grant to them wise counsel and the wisdom to hear. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the city of Detroit and those of us in her suburbs, that you indeed would work the blessings uh, of this life in our midst, that there would be jobs for those without, that there would be adequate employ employees for those looking to hire, and that by your goodness, your Christian people in this region would speak Christ to all. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would indeed uh, remove COVID from among us, that you take from us this, this plague that seems to be hindering so much of our life, including our gathering together. We pray that you would humble us before you, that we would call out to you for help and mercy in the face of this problem. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Heavenly Father, for safety on the roads in the snow that we are getting, that you would give people wisdom and safe habits, and that you would protect those who are homeless and living in the midst of these problems. Lord, in your mercy. Father, into your hands we commit all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercies through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we bring the offerings forward. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. 
It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him, being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had to mercy in those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
And may the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, to one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>